early adopters of the EMP token were contributors to the rocket fuel needed to get this project off the ground. And the community needs to understand how does this entire approach piece together? It's one thing to have a lot of formula, a lot of ideas, a lot of talk, but it's another thing to actually be able to see how it all fits together. So I'm going to use some analogies in the absence of physical props, but the idea is I would like everybody to get a good sense of how the process would flow from the token to the homeowner, including institutional participants, including the platform, and why this process impacts the actual demand and utility of the token. So let's look at the Empower ecosystem as having several participants. Obviously, the main beneficiary should be the potential homeowner, the prospective homeowner. But along the way, in that continuum from the homeowner to the token holder, we have several things happening. The homeowner is going to interact with a developer. The developer, in turn, needs access to capital in order to build the home. In order to gain access to capital, the developer needs to be able to prove that the homeowner will be able to actually pay for whatever home they're going to obtain. The homeowner can only prove that payment through their actual history of payments or through their ongoing payments. The developer, when they require capital, needs to interact with an entity. That entity, for the purposes of our uh, early phases, is Empawa. When the developer communicates with Empawa, Empawa goes through a process of defining with the developer what the capital needs are, what the projected returns are, how many units are going to be built, etc., etc. Once that is done, Empower has to find a way of attracting capital, not only from the Web3 community, but as projects get larger, and we're talking about 500 home projects, 1,000 home projects, 25,000 home projects, we need to be able to draw capital from a variety of sources. Now, drawing capital from a variety of sources means that these institutional investors who would be contributing capital would have to have a way of having a reliable sense of the instruments that are going to be used in the capital obtention process. Sorry, that, that sounds quite uh, roundabout or confusing, but the idea here is we effectively can view Empower as an underwriting platform that is going to institutional investors and giving them a package of product that they're going to be comfortable putting their money into. In this case, for those of us in the Web3 community, we know these products as NFTs. In the case of an outside investor, these NFTs are not just an artistic product, they are effectively a contract for a portion of a loan that has very, very specific repayment clauses and terms. I refer to these NFTs, the Empower NFTs, as SDRI NFTs. I'm going to see if I remember what the acronym is, but it's a secured defined return instrument. What does that mean? Well, what it means is as an instrument, we wanted to create something that closely mimics the properties of a bond. Why a bond? We like bonds because bonds have a long history in the world of finance. It's very easy to explain bonds as debt instruments for project finance to institutional investors. Bonds can have many, many features. 
They're sensitive to interest rates, which of course we would have to ensure that our instruments are also sensitive to interest rates, given the volatility of foreign currencies throughout the continent. Bonds have a principal or a face value. Bonds oftentimes have an interest rate that is paid out or a coupon, and they have redemption periods, a tenor. All of those features are very attractive in terms of financing, but they're also very attractive in terms of explaining to financial counterparties what we're doing. The beauty of this though is once we can explain it as a bond, we have the ability to mint these instruments in the quantities needed for the capital raise that is required. We're able to reduce costs by leveraging Web3 technology in the process. So that's fantastic, you may say, as an EMP token holder. And now you get a sense of the primary instrument or tooling that the Empower platform will utilize to access capital from traditional sources of capital in order to redirect that to property developers who will in turn leverage that against the cash flows that will be generated whenever they sell the properties and the homeowners effectively take possession of their home and over a period of time submit their cash flows as in the form of payment so that the property developer can in turn repay the bond instrument to the Empower SDRI NFT holders. But then there's another piece of the pie. We have to deal with the reality of collateral. Now this is something that I have firsthand knowledge of. In many of these countries, getting a lien on an asset is incredibly time consuming and costly. It is not only time consuming and costly, in some instances, it's impossible. It's impossible because there are rules that prevent foreigners from holding title and deed to certain properties. And this is true in many countries. And it's actually true not just in countries in Africa. In places like St. Kitts and Nevis, which is a beautiful, beautiful Caribbean island destination, and in many other Caribbean countries, if you are a foreigner wishing to purchase property, you must make application to the government and pay sometimes a 10% alien land holding fee. But the key is you must make application to the government. If your application is declined, you have no right to own the property on that island. The same thing is in place in many countries. I know in Ghana, for instance, there are certain rules that say foreigners are only allowed a 50-year leasehold right to property. Now, that has an impact on one's ability to generate security against a financial instrument. Something that has been done that is actually quite revolutionary in my view is the whole concept of, well, if the EMP token is truly a utility token and not just another attempt at recreating a currency. What is that utility? How can that utility be used uniquely? How can that utility be used to facilitate and aid in the financing of these projects? And herein comes yet another Empower innovation. The idea that the EMP token now represents a unit of house. Now this is really important because many people will try to equate the EMP token with whatever market value they can see online. But there's a separation. The EMP token will represent a 100 US dollar unit of house. What does that mean? I'm going to draw an analogy. If we look at a commodity like gold, we've all seen gold bars. Gold is normally traded by something called the London Troy ounce. The London Troy ounce is a measure 
a volume of gold. It is always a London Troy ounce. However, when people trade it, the value of gold fluctuates, but it does not change what that London Troy ounce is. In order to have a true utility that facilitates financing, we must be in a situation to create a derivative sort of instrument that enables us to easily have liquid collateral that can be executed quickly in the event of default of the Empower NFT SDRI instrument. Why is that important? Because loans and collateral go hand in hand. One of the challenges of giving loans on the continent is securing those loans is a very difficult, complex process that is fraught with bureaucracy and fraud. If we are able to extract the bureaucracy and fraud, but still provide some representation of the underlying asset as representation of that collateral, and that underlying asset representation is an actual measure that anybody around the world knows what it's associated with in the same way as everybody around the world understands a London Troy ounce or one liter in terms of a metric measurement. This is the objective of the EMP token in terms of utility. It is a measure of unit of house. And in so doing, it has applicability as a collateralization instrument. Because it has applicability as a collateralization instrument in terms of it being a measure of unit of house, by its very nature, it will be required for every single financing transaction that runs through the Empower platform. And the reality is, because of the nature of Web3 technology, there is actually no limit in terms of what other projects can use the EMP token for, should that happen in the future. But I would like to focus discreetly on this particular use case of the funding, the capitalizing of homes, affordable housing homes in Africa. I'm going to do a deep dive about how that collateralization piece works. But for now, if you accept on the face the principle of the EMP token being used as a measure of house, then you can see why in the absence of traditional collateral, substituting the EMP token, which is a fungible tradable token, would ultimately create a high level of demand for that token for every financing activity that takes place. Because it will be impossible to issue a bond instrument, or in our case, an Empower SDRI NFT, without assigning a certain degree of collateral to that instrument. It would be impossible to do that without the interest rates, the required return being exceedingly high. In our case now, we are going to be leveraging this technology and the EMP token in order to guarantee investors and holders of the Empower SDRI NFTs, the ability that in the event of default, they will be made whole to some degree. They will not be left with absolutely nothing and they will not be left with an asset sitting in the middle of an African country that cannot be sold. And as we know, if you have an asset that cannot be sold is completely illiquid, it effectively has no value. We wanted to solve that problem, and that is the approach that we use.